Hey guys, Bailey here, and in today's video, I'm gonna be talking all about how to use the Sawyer Squeeze. The Sawyer Squeeze is one of the most popular backpacking filters that I've seen anyways, especially in the long distance backpacking community. It's nice because it gets out all the floaties, it's relatively small and light, pretty cost efficient, easy to get a hold of. However, it's definitely not for everyone. It doesn't get out viruses, and it certainly has its downfalls, just like how it will sometimes freeze if it gets too cold and potentially get clogged up if you don't back filter it enough. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about some of the specs real quick, then we're gonna talk about how to use it, which is probably what you all wanna know. And if you want to jump to that, then definitely check out the timestamp below, as well as some other tips and tricks at the end of the video. So be sure to stay tuned until the end. So some technical specs, Sawyer has several different filtering products. They have the mini, which I've used, it has pretty slow flow rate. There's the micro, which is kind of like the in-between, and then the squeeze, which is probably the most popular that I've seen. Now the squeeze is nice because it usually runs somewhere between $35 to $40, depending on where you buy it from. You can find it at REI. You can even usually find it at a lot of outdoor stores in smaller mountain towns and trail towns and that kind of thing. When you buy the product, it comes in a big plastic box with, of course, the actual filter itself, along with some different accessories. So they used to have sports squeeze cap, and now there's more like an actual flip cap on it in the most recent one that I've bought. They also usually come with a seal ring and then now they seem to be including an extra one because I did get an extra one in the one I bought recently. They also come with two to three water bags to put your dirty water in to attach the filter to. They come with a bag, like a mesh bag, if you were going to do gravity filtration, as long with some gravity features like an inline hose that you can use and some inline attachments to attach your filter to the hose. And then last of all, they include a plunger so you can backwash the filter to get all the nasties out that have gotten inside. Now the nice thing about the Sawyer Squeeze is it weighs three ounces according to the Sawyer website, so that is pretty darn light. The other thing is you don't have to worry about running out of anything like you would if you were using drops um, or something that's consumable. So now for how to use the Sawyer Squeeze itself, it really is fairly simple, but there's some tricks that can make it a lot easier in case you've never done it before. So the first things first is you're going to want to fill up a dirty water container. So you're gonna to wanna to have dirty water containers and clean water containers if you're using the Sawyer. Um, theoretically, you could just drink straight out of the Sawyer. People do do that, but it's kind of nice to have both depending on what you're doing. Regardless, you're gonna have one with dirty water in it. So you're gonna wanna fill that up. There's different ways you can do it. It's really best if you can use somewhat running water. However, that's not always an option, especially in drier areas. So it's nice to be able to bring either like the bottom half of a water bottle cut off, either take one of those Sawyer bladder bags and cut it and use the bottom as a scoop. I've seen someone use a poop shovel to make like a little spout out of water. So that's an option too. But you're gonna wanna fill up a bottle or a bladder with water. The nice thing is the Sawyer is pretty compatible with a lot of different sort of threads. So usually like a standard water bottle thread, like smart water bottles, of course the Sawyer bags. They work okay with the platypus bags, but they do sometimes have like leakage issues with those. Um, so just kind of try it out and see what works for you, but they're pretty compatible with a lot of different products. So once you have filled your dirty water device, the next thing you're gonna do, of course, is to thread the Sawyer onto that piece of gear. And then you wanna make sure that there's a good seal on there. It should be a good seal, especially if it's new, but just make sure to keep track of that little white seal on the inside because that will impact that. If it doesn't get on right or it's not at the right angle, then it can leak. If you are filtering into another container, then you don't really want the dirty water getting in there because then it just contaminates and then you could still get Girardi or something. After it's attached, if you are just gonna drink out of it, you can just drink straight out of it. If you are going to put it in a new, new bottle or use it to cook or something, then flip it over and apply pressure to the dirty water container. So the nice thing about bladder bags is you can like roll them up as they get lower. Um, if you're using a water bottle, like a smart water bottle for dirty water, then just know that you might have to let out some of that air every once in a while in order to be able to finish filtering out what's in there. And then once you have finished filtering, go ahead and take the Sawyer off after you've closed your containers. I usually try to shake out some of the extra water just so it doesn't get all over the place. Do know that you won't be able to get all of the water out. And this is important because that is what can cause it to freeze. And if it freezes, technically that could compromise the ability of the filter to do its job. So you wanna make sure to keep it warm, especially if you're hiking in colder temperatures. So pretty simple, easy peasy. I really like taking this even on day hikes for that reason. So now let's talk about a couple different quick tips that might help make this go even better. 
The first one would be to backwash it. So it does get gunk in there and that can really slow down the flow rate over time. The nice thing is the Sawyer Squeeze does not need to be backwashed as often as say the Mini, which is much smaller and gets backed up a lot quicker. They provide a plunger for that. If you are going to be long distance backpacking, a pro to bringing a smart water bottle with a flip sport cap is that you can actually use that to backwash your filter. Um, so it'll just fit right on when you take the little flip cap off the filter itself. You can plug it on there, squeeze, and the force should push out some of the gunk. Another thing would be that if you are not going to be using it during the off season, like the winter, then to be sure to check out the bags, like the, the bladders that come with it. There's instructions on there on how to properly store your Sawyer for the winter. It involves backwashing it with um, water as well as like bleach water to clean everything out that way mold doesn't grow in it because I have heard of that happening with older Sawyer filters is eventually they will grow mold inside the other thing would be to consider getting some extra attachments so I have personally not found the attachments that come with the Sawyer to be all that helpful which is a bummer because you can't buy the Sawyer without them if you just need a replacement because you froze your filter or something um, however there are some extra attachments that you can buy on like Amazon and stuff where it will put a threadle on the other side of your Sawyer so you can just screw it right onto a smart water bottle so you don't have to worry about your clean water spilling on the ground or anything like that when you're finagling with it. And there's some other interesting ones out there too. You can buy extra rings. Um, along the topic of rings, some people will buy garden hose like seal rings and replace the Sawyer ones with that because the Sawyer sealant rings can be a little bit finicky and I personally have had issues with those in the past. So you do wanna be careful with them and try to take good care of them so they don't leak dirty water all over the place. Another thing would be to be very careful if you choose to use the Sawyer bladder bags. A lot of people say they break really fast. I personally have not really used them for that reason and that's why I've used the platypus bags. Some people use the CNOC bags or you can just filter straight out of a smart water bottle and then that works fine too and you don't have to worry about it busting. So um, just be careful if you choose to go the route of using the Sawyer bags. And then another thing would be if you are hiking someplace with really gross water like cow water in the desert that kind of thing you can pre-filter your water through a bandana and that will just help the life of your filter last a lot longer and then sleeping with your filter in the winter will also help keep it from freezing then finally if you are drinking really nasty water even when you filter it sometimes it can have weird tastes like a muddy or earthy taste or maybe it just wigs you out like for me personally sometimes especially at the beginning of the backpacking season it takes me a little bit to get over that mental hump of drinking creek water and stuff so I will usually add like drink mixes to my water to make it more palatable and make it so I notice that a lot less so and if you are interested in some different drink mix ideas for you to take with you on your next backpacking trip for your filtered water then I would highly recommend checking out that video next and of course as always if you have questions let me know down in the comments and I'll see you guys next week